Welcome back to the channel, y'all. I am Miss Titus 2, and today I'm going to be interviewing two former AKAs. So y'all make sure you prepare your questions. I think this is going to be a very, very good and insightful conversation. And we'll be right back. All right. So the live chat. Thank you, everyone who has um, who's been following this conversation about Greek life and Christianity and all that. If y'all can, please let me know in the chat um, some of the questions that you're going to have. We'll ask those towards the end of the show. But y'all just y'all just hang tight because I think this is going to be so good. But I have two special guests with me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring them on. Erica and Katrina. Welcome, you guys. Hi. <laughs> hello. 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 So. Do either of you have a YouTube channel? We can start there. Yeah. I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, Katrina doesn't, but Erica, you do. What's the name of your channel, Erica? Um, His Strength Counseling, or you can look by my name, Erica Harris. Um, if you just Google, why did I denounce, AKA, again, okay. then you can pull it up. So is your channel more so about Greek life, or is it just about different things And sometimes you talk it's about? It's typically about different things, general Christian topics, but you can also find my testimony and other various videos I've done on denouncing and renouncing. Perfect, perfect. So yeah, I've actually, I've seen a few videos with Erica. Katrina, is this your first interview about your experience? Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I did stuff in Clubhouse, but this is the first time you can see me, like see me, see me. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm excited. Um, I know a little bit about AKA because I went to an AKA, uh, is it, I think, a rush interest meeting? So I was yeah. like, I was mm -hmm. totally interested in, in college. Um, but anyway, so today we're going to talk about you guys' personal experience within the sorority, why you chose to come out of it, and um, just find out, like, what are some of the things that AKA kind of promotes and the things that they believe and the things that, that you have to do to even become an AKA. So I want to start off, I guess we can start from Erica and then go to Katrina. Did you, were you raised Christian? Like, did you come up in the church or was that something that came later? Yeah, you know, I know there's several of us who've been, you know, the, the, I call it the, yes, I grew up in church, and particularly my grandma, great grandma. I was in the Easter program and all that. And, but when I got to college is when I, I call it uneducated because I fell for the lie that all religions are the same, you know, everybody gets to heaven. And so I really wasn't walking with God, to be honest, to given, though I said I was a believer, but I really wasn't, if you be honest. So when AKA um, interest group came on the campus that I was at the college, I was like, I had no history of any Greek life except for watching the movie like School Days and things like this, but I had no aspirations like so many um, young women do. They have legacy and other people. So that wasn't my story. I was a you know straight A student, you know, stay out of trouble and interest group was there and it happened to be to start a chapter, a new chapter at that college campus. And, you know, they told me what it was and I was like, cool. And that's how <laughs> I ended up getting introduced to it. Okay, so you didn't have a you had a religious background, but you wouldn't say you were actually like a Christian. No, I mean, I claim, I mean, I was like, I grew up Christian. If somebody was like a, if one of those like, you know, statistics person would have knocked on my door and say, what do you believe? I would have said, oh yeah, Christian. I believe in Christ, but no. <laughs> gotcha. All right, yeah. Katrina, what about you? Um, what do you mean just like my faith background? Yeah, so did you grow up in, in church or, you know? Was yeah, well, I was I was raised uh, Catholic. I don't know if you want to show the, the photos or I don't know if you got that photo from when I did First Holy Communion. Is it this one? This no, one? Yeah, 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 that one right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was in the second grade. So I went through the whole religious study. And like I said, my mother was raised Catholic. And like I said, she went to Catholic school, K through 12th grade. And even though she didn't really like her experience. She still was like grounded on the faith and she said she would raise us that way. But after we, uh, you know, became Catholic, we really personally, we didn't really go to like church like that after that. So I, you know, so I did that in the second grade. I was confirmed when I was in the fifth grade. And then I would say after the sixth grade, we didn't really go to church too much. I mean, we might've went on like special occasions, um, my dad, he was raised Episcopal, but he wasn't really, really practicing. Like he wasn't like necessarily going to church with us or going to his own church. So it was just us and we wasn't doing no Bible studies at home. And like I said, I thought I was Christian. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't really know too much about the faith, 
when you think of a nun, you think of a priest. Does it get more holy than that? <laughs> but I, you know, I didn't know. I mean, I mean, I my uncle was a priest. I have a a, a great grandfather that was an Episcopal priest. So I have a lot of religious stuff on both sides. But again, if you don't got that relationship and you part of something false, mm -hmm. then you ain't Christian, but you, you still got to know. So I found out later on that, you know, I, I guess I was, I thought I was Christian. Then I probably was a lukewarm Christian, but then I realized the Catholic faith, you got to add all these works. You got to do all this extra stuff and it don't got nothing to do with grace. It's like, you just trying to work yourself into to heaven and, and you know we can't do that yeah yeah so erica you said your family was not greek you were the first one right mm. and yeah like, i was the first one mm -hmm. but katrina just based on these few pictures that you sent me i'll, I'll put them <laughs> back up it sound like y'all yeah I, I mean I, I can give you a little brief history so please please okay so my my grandfather this is my dad's father he went to cheney university that's, that's the school i went to Mm -hmm. And I, I believe he was like pledging Kappa. Something happened. It didn't work out. And all I know was the story I heard was he burnt up the paddle. And that was that. But later on, when my dad went to school, he he was actually interested in uh, being a part of Mega Sci-Fi. But you know how sometimes you, you hear about you want to do something, but then when you get on the campus... You just don't really clash with like the group or the group, you know. So he ended up becoming interested in Phi Beta Sigma, and that's what he did. Now, uh, my mom's story was her, uh, she kind of came from Deltas, really. Her, uh, well, my grandmother, her mother, uh, she was in the, uh, Del uh, the, excuse me, Pyramid Pledge Club. But um, she didn't finish or whatever, but she had an aunt that was a Delta. So, but back then, you could go to both. Like you, like now they might just have an all campus Greek interest meeting and they just give you a little bit of information and then they just have the interest meeting and you usually can't just go to one and go to another. But back then you could go to how, however you want it and it didn't really affect you. Like it didn't mark you. Like if you went to a Delta one, you couldn't turn around and be like, all right, I'm gonna go to this AKA one. Cause no, the Delta's already got you. It was almost like you're marked or you're like blackballed if you go to one and you go to the other. Back then, you could like you could go to both. So my mom told me she went to both, um, but the fit for her was more with AKA, and and then as our family grew or whatever, people really was just doing AKA. But it, it's a lot of deltas. It's a lot of AKAs. I got my mom's older sister is an AKA, and a lot of my family went to Hampton Hampton University. Mm -hmm. So um, my mom sister was an AKA. My mom younger sister is an AKA and we got a lot of cousins on her side that are AKAs and then their daughters. And th the way it works, is like you're Greek, you probably marry a Greek and then your child's going to be a Greek. And then you fast forward to my dad's side. My, my dad's uh, aunt, this is my grandmother's uh, younger sister. She's a, she was an AKA. I mean, she, she, she's passed, but she was an AKA and she went to Cheney as well, but this was before, it was actually a chapter. It was like a city chapter. Um, and a city chapter, if you don't understand what that is, that's before a chapter is founded and you just kind of, a, a bunch of groups, I mean, a bunch of uh, chapters kind of just go into one. So it's a lot of history from my school. It's a lot of history with the family. But like I said, they're all in it. When I mean all, you think about links. They're in there too. Jack and Jill, Mason, Eastern Star on both sides of the family. So wow. it's like when I denounced or, you know, I didn't denounce the people. Cause like I said, I would have to go live under a rock because they're everywhere. I look here, they're there. <laughs> I look here, they're there. You know, I can't get away from it. So it's like, one thing I just want to stress going forward with this conversation, I don't hate the people. No, I hate the sin. And that's it. Oh, that's good. I, you brought up a lot of stuff just in that, especially talking about Jack and Jill and Lynx. It, had I not read that book, our kind of people, I never would have even known those groups existed. Mm -hmm. So that could be a, another whole episode in itself. I didn't know you were like familiar with that. So both of y'all, both of y'all know what those things are. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I'm totally in the dark. Actually, Katrina, can you give a quick, a quick, brief, like, explanation as to what Lynx and Jack and Jill is? Well, it's kind of vague. It's kind of funny. Like, when I, you'll probably talk about when I did the Miss Counter Girl pageant, but uh, my brother actually was, uh, he did it like two years before I did. He was an escort for like the same type of AKA thing I was in. And um, they have to get ads and that's how they, you know, raise money for scholarships and all that type of stuff. And they had an ad for Jack and Jill. And the only Jack and Jill at that time I knew about was the ice cream. I ain't know nothing about the organization, like the organization organization. But from what I heard, it's still a little blurry, but from what I heard, it's like the Deltas kind of, I don't know if it was the founders or something dealing with Delta and it's like their kids. That's oh. how the Jack and Jill, I think it's kind of like that. They're, they're elite, uh, bougie. Uh-huh. <laughs> are supposed to be helping, you know, children and youth and um, minorities and things like this. And they're 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 commu- their side community programs, um, and they do a lot of fundraising for things like this for the community and scholarships. And I believe Jack and Jill does have like a mentorship program and things like this for grooming. Get them when they're young and impressionable. Grooming to present. And here's the thing: the Catch Twenty Two about date, Satan's kingdom. Nobody says it doesn't look good mm-hmm. on the outside, right? And so little kids are seeing these so-called, ma- they've made it. And especially those of color, seeing these women and men who are in high, you know, corporate America and doing these things. And they're like, you can do this too. But they don't just say you can do this independent of if you become one of these g- divine nine Greek things. They, they do, they don't, they don't divorce those two. If they're honest, like I said, they, they they're grooming him from a young age that in order to be successful in this world, you need to go Greek. Wow. So Jack and Jill actually is like a precursor to Greek life. Mm-hmm. I did not yeah, know the that. principles, you know, of course, they of course, they paint them as success and um, leadership and self-confidence and things like this. And of course, we know those are all good qualities to have. But they, again, to me, you have to look at the foundation and you have to look at the underlying purpose of it is that we in our own flesh can rise to the top by certain you know, qualities. And this is what encompasses the good life. This is the good life if you go this route. Mm-hmm. And to me, I think that's part of the deception is of, you know, that they promote. Melanie Austin says Jack and Jill is very similar to a sorority. They have induction ceremonies. Don't know how deep their rituals go, and they're highly selective for inch for exactly. Injury. Yes, wow. Melanie, she's at spot on. You have to be. You can't go join just. I want to join them. You can't. You have to be. Mm-hmm. Joseph. Yeah, says, like yeah, like my um my my aunt, her mother was a Delta. She I don't know if she was trying to be a Delta or ever was interested, but she went to Hampton University as well. And that's where she met my uncle. And he was actually interested in uh, being a member of Mega Sci-Fi. I'm not sure if he just totally gave up on that, but their son is in the Jack and Jill. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I might have to bring y'all on to talk about that <laughs> tomorrow in the future, but moving, moving right along. Okay. So when y'all got to college, what was it about AKA that interested you? You want who who you want to go first? Either one, popcorn style. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me it was because I'm tend I tend to be a more of a loner kind of person. Like I am like a 50% people person, 50%. I'm happy by my leave me alone, leave me alone. But I what appealed to me was again the concept of I would be introduced and have now a whole gaggle of sisters all over the world. You know, and it, and it does pan out, you know, whenever I would go with my AKA paraphernalia, if there was another AKA, they would immediately say hi and make connections. And so just that that social piece is what appealed to me. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it was school days at my house. I mean, you had everything, the plaque. I mean, like I said, my room, like before I moved into my room, I moved into the room where my mom basically had all her college AKA stuff when I was three. Mm -hmm. She had this big poster on the wall that said future AKA. She had all this other stuff that was just her stuff. 
if you look at the photos that I said that she got when she went over, it, one was a big pillow. And I don't know if you have the other one where I was playing with the Cabbage Patch doll, but right next to it was her, her college pillow. Like, I mean, and like I said, my dad, he had, his, uh, yep, that, that, that pillow right there was right next to my bed. And all, like, so, some of that stuff was, like, in, like, it was, like, on the other bed because I had a twin, and then I had a twin that was attached to it. And she, I mean, it was like a, a shrine. it was like an AKA museum. But wow. anyway, yeah, Mr. Duke, shrine. shrine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, essentially that. I mean, but she had it all over the house. It wasn't just really that room. It was all over the place. But for me, I didn't know, and I didn't think anything was bad. So it would be like, for example, people can have people that are in the military, and then they want to have their other family go in the military, and they praise it. But, you know, they don't really know too much about boot camp until they get there. They don't know how much stuff they might have to deal with or whatever. But my mom told me stories. She told me stories about things she went through when she was online. So like I said, back then, because she went over spring uh, 77, everything was above ground. Hazen was not illegal. I mean, you know, some stuff they, you know, may not do. But she let me know stuff she went through. But when the time came, you know, things had changed. But she never made me feel like, you know, if they're not going to pledge and you ain't going to be good enough in this household or whatever, it was nothing, nothing like that. But as far as me, when I went to the campus, I was totally comfortable. And the way I was brought up, because like I said, I came from a Greek family. So it was very like, how can I explain it? We were all family. So even though I had a lot of AKAs, we still held deltas. So I'm not going to diss a delta. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad is a sigma. My brother's a sigma. I actually personally hung out with Zetas more than I hung out with AKAs because after my mom graduated from college, she was an actor for a while. I mean, she still had connections to, you know, AKAs and all that type of stuff. Because matter of fact, her line sister is my brother's godmother. Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you, like, they're all, you know, connected. So we might not have known the full story of everything everybody went through at their school, their chapter. But slowly but surely, I started hearing the stories. But anyway, I was comfortable when I went to campus. So I knew exactly what I wanted to do. It was just a matter of when. And um, I kind of got an interesting story really quick to tell you. Yeah. So when I was, um, I would say I was a sophomore. And I was still dating this guy that we, we like, like we, we graduated together. We were high school sweethearts and he went to school. Like he took a year off. He didn't go right when I went to school. So he was kind of a year behind me, but we was the same age. He went to the school called Cutstown and, um, you know, long distance. It was really not, we weren't too far apart, but you know, if you don't get to see each other all the time, talk all the time is long distance. Mm -hmm. So he wanted me to transfer his to school. And my mom was like, ain't no way. They ain't got no AKAs on that campus. Mm -hmm. I said, well, they got like group fight. They ain't got AKAs on that campus. AKA, yeah. Ain't no way you going there. So it's it's all, it, it was like, this is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't want to do it, but it was just like, okay. You know, but um, I, you know, I got along and because my brother became a Sigma at the, the, uh, the school I went to. Uh, fall fall 2000, when I came in, he was already Greek. So I already got to know all the people that went over there that was Greek on the campus. I mean, I never did nothing like disrespectful. Like I come from a Greek family. I'm just going to walk all over y'all plots. No, I still met and made, you know, individual relationships. And matter of fact, people that really didn't know me, they would be probably confused as who I wanted to be. And I'm going to tell you this, this other quick story. So I wasn't Greek yet. And a lot of times I used to go with the Sigmas and Zetas when they would have like the homecoming or the May, whatever, because my dad and my brother, you know, my brother was on the campus. That was his chapter and all that stuff. So we would always come together. So this one time, I think I was like a sophomore. They had a concert. I didn't, I didn't plan on going. So it was these two Zetas. They were from, I'm not going to say their names, but they were from a uh, spring or two semester. And they were like really, really close. And they were going to go to the concert. And one of them had two young kids. And they asked me, you know, are you going to the concert? I said, no, I'm not going. 
And they said, you mind if, you know, watching them? I said, sure, there's no problem. So they took, they came over to my dorm and I watched them just for a couple hours. And after the concert, you know, everything was fine. And the next day I, um, I actually had a class for one of the Sigmas that was from the um, Spring 02 line as well. And he said, so what'd you do? Did you go to concert? I said, no, I was watching um, one of the, uh, the Zeta's kids. And she, he was like, what? He said, are you trying to be a Zeta? I said, no. He was like, well, be careful because they'll try to take advantage of you and, you know, think you want to do it. And they'll try to just have you do personal favors. I said, no, I did that because I wasn't doing nothing. And I considered them to be a part of my family or whatever. But that's when I told him, I said, he was like, you don't want to be a Zeta? I said, I want to be an AKA. And it was like, because I supported everybody. Yeah. I, you know, if it was Zeta Week, I supported them. Sigma Week, Sigma Gamma Rho, Delta, whatever. I didn't discriminate because they're my they was my family. But that's that's that. So there is this cardinal rule. I remember this when I was in college. Like you cannot go to more than one interest meeting, or like you said, you're blackballed from the other organizations. Why is it like that? Do y'all know? Like, is it that's is it just mm -hmm. you know, of course, as when you're when you're when you're when your heart is towards one organization it's kind of like a marriage mm -hmm. excluding all others so think of it that way you want your husband oh it's okay he's going to go check out the other ladies too it's the, the same principle that underlines it i don't i don't know what necessarily changes because like i said back in the day they had the one because everybody like i said don't come from a greek family or they just really might because they even greeks will say this whatever you want to do go to the campus, get to know them, because if you do get in, that's who you're going to be with. Mm -hmm. And even though it's bigger than the campus, that's like your home. And you don't want to get into something and that's your home and like you hate it. Mm -hmm. You don't get along with the people. You don't, you know, because the way it is, whether you have a bad experience or not, you're supposed to be very discreet. Even though everybody got problems, you're not really supposed to talk about it. But as far as the whole not talking, like it's even deeper than just going to the uh, like an interest meeting. If you just talk to somebody, you could just walk up to someone or pull them to the side and say, you know, I want it. I'm kind of interested. That can get you blackballed too, because if somebody know you went and talked to them, and they're thinking that's what you want to do, everybody's talking. Yeah. You know, but I wasn't like that because I know everybody might change their mind and they have a right to. But the only thing that probably will be a problem for me or probably someone else, which could be reasonable, is if you went out for AKA and then you didn't get picked and then you went to another one and tried to get in that. That's different because that's like you really did want to be an AKA. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that. Like, because if we did not choose you, you would have been an AKA. So that could be like, that ain't work out. Let me try to get with some. And that's happened too. And that's common knowledge too. I mean, so like I said, people might go out, they don't get picked, and they go do something else. But I don't know. But the way from my common knowledge, I don't care what school you go to. And I'm not bragging because. Like I said, I love them all, but AKA, everybody was going after AKA, mm -hmm. like everybody. Yeah, Delta and AKA seem to be the most popular black sororities. Am, am I right about that? I know on my campus, that's exactly how it was. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it's yeah. to me, it just comes down to that heart issue is mm -hmm. because some, again, to me, because and get into this, all of them want your heart. You have to say, play your heart to the thing. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing to me as a mayor. Let's say we're again married, and if we don't work out, then okay, go ahead and go to another one. No, they want to make sure that your heart is for the, you, you can't have no divided heart, you got to have a heart for us. So if you're going around to different places, yeah, we don't want you know, they don't want you because we want somebody who's real, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if this was like because I was, I was a girl scout when I was younger, I was a brownie and a junior. I mean. You know, people can be in that, but it's not like a tie. It's like you can be connected, you can be friends, and then maybe if you don't do it no more, you might lose touch. 
but this is like forever, like exactly. forever, ever. And it's like, it, it, it's just this weird feeling, but for some people, they might want to get out, but they don't want to talk about it because they don't want that backlash. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why can't it just be like, I'm working at this job and I just don't want to work there no more. Yeah. Why does it got to be like, I got to like <laughs> sell my soul, get all these spirits out. I mean, come on, like, really? Yeah, but it's, it, it is that way. People are offended when y'all denounce and especially when you do it publicly. And I just, I don't understand like why it's like they take it personal. So they're so offended. Mm -hmm. I mean, because like I said, it's, it's so many people that, I mean, they try to say that Christian principles nonsense. Let me say, and, and I've heard people say this on a lot of videos, the Christian principles start, I mean, stop once the rituals start. Mm, that's good. It, it, it is like once you start, because, but if you don't know the Bible, and like I said, everybody's not Christian, people might believe whatever. But if you're doing this whole uh, Christian principles thing, I mean, if you're a Muslim, why would you want to do that? And, and oh, that's another thing. My grad advisor, well, my would have been grad advisor, because, well, it was, it was three things that happened when I was a sophomore. That incident with the AKAs, I, I don't I can't remember the school, but everything was shut down for a year because they too too drowned. Too mm -hmm. uh they would have been they, they were going out for it, but the chapter was actually suspended. So they wasn't gonna even if let's say they did survive that, they weren't gonna go over anyway. But like I said, that always happens and that really bothers me. Whether I mean, even if I was like you're gonna pledge, you're not gonna play, whatever, why would you put somebody through something? and tell them they're going to do something, and they're not going to do it. That's just, like, so corrupt to me. How, wait, like, how does that even happen? We're, we're like, going, but this Yeah, I know we're all over the place, but, yeah. yeah. But, okay, so how, how could they have a line if the chapter was suspended? Because you don't care. Exactly. It's your chapter. It, so you know how when you say right? your organization? Uh-huh. It's your chapter. It's, like, you running it however you want to run it. But the way I was brought in when we came on the yard – it was like one AKA left and she was an active. So we was essentially brought in by grad chapter. And I mean, all of them pledged and, but it was no, no hate or nothing like that. So it really depends on who's bringing you in. What's the mentality about following the rules or not. I mean, cause like I said, once that rule happened and was in 1990, no haze and this, that, some people really stopped, but some people don't. It's sad to say it shouldn't be like, well, it depends on your chapter. It's the same organization. Like, what is your chapter? What does that got to do with anything? It's the same organization. Yeah, the underground process is alive and well as we're talking right now. It don't matter what the true status of the. Of yeah, the, it doesn't of, matter. Uh, it really depends on what you want to do. Again, there's always an underground, active underground, and you can particularly see it. I want to say, this is my theory, especially in the South, you know, especially during the summer, yet they have these picnics and things like this. You better not go down there, paper, because they will charge you up again. So the underground is a very active, continually, purposely engineered to me by the enemy to, that people, young, impressionable, um, young women and men <coughs> feel like they have to go through something to, for it to be, again, real and accepted. Mm -hmm. And to me, that it's so diabolical because again, they will again. I have again, they will reject you. You might be, you might have paid your that thousands of dollars to get your stuff, but if you did not get hurt and beat up and humiliated and all this other stuff, you're not real. But it, yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's it's different terminology. They call it paper now, but when I was doing it, they just said you straight skated. That was and that yeah, was like a cuss word. All those terms. Like, yeah. like if you say, uh, yeah, I mean, they got different terminologies. But if someone said, e even if, and, and guess you say you skated, you didn't. It, it, it's it's kind of like it's a bad word, but do you have a choice? Because it's like they whoever brought you in, if they're bringing you in and they're not even putting that pressure on you or telling you to do that. Matter of fact, they're saying don't do that, and they pledge. Are so you talking rational? What is the problem? Care. Because I'm saying this is how diabolical the system is because I came in the same time when it was a big hush hush that don't do no hazing because they were in trouble. But we wanted to be hazed. This is how crazy 
trying to join these organizations is we wanted to be hazed because we wanted to be real. See, to me, this is that thing about these organizations, they put out a message that you're not real, you're not whole, you're not good enough until you go through this and come part of us. And so to me, people who are willingly to go through and suffer this kind of things for this, you know, talk about red flags about, is this truly a Christian thing? It's like, do you really think Christ would want you drinking human feces, eating and doing crazy stuff? And I mean, it's like, you think this is really? And, but, Wait, but yeah, we were willing to do it. Who's drinking human feces? Is that a ritual? No, I mean, drinking, no, okay. no. Like I said, Look, one, um, and everything, water, like drinking too much water, those sticking things, getting beat up and punched. And, and some people, they go straight up to the sexually immoral. They have the frat come over and intimidate young females to do stuff. And of course, they claim you don't have to do nothing you don't want to. But young little girls, are, I mean, young and naive thinking I have to do this to get into the organization. And that happens. It really does. So do y'all know personally like any stories like that where you you're like, I know this school did that or that chapter did something like that? Well, I can tell you it was a girl that went over uh and I don't mind saying her name because I she she got she got expelled. She got kicked out. This was from um I'm sorry, fall 06. This was the line right after mine, because mine I'm, I went over Delta Iota Spring on Four. So the next line we had was fall 06. And this girl previously, she was an alpha angel. And again, that stuff's not even allowed, but the guys can, that's all underground too. But back in the day, the girls, I mean, the sororities, they had like auxiliary uh, for men, but we don't do that. We don't do that no more, but the guys still have it on the campus, hush, hush. And a lot of times people join that stuff when they're freshmen or whatever. And usually if I can talk to somebody, even though I was in the sorority and I didn't necessarily know that that was bad back then, I would encourage them, you don't got to do that. Because they like are pledging these girls, mm -hmm. like really pledging these girls. Mm -hmm. And and it, people still to this day will hold it like it's the highest honor. And some of them don't even join sorority. I mean, some might try to join a sorority, but some are content. To just stay that way. But it's all demonic now. I mean, now that I know now. But, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. But as far as my experience, I had a lot of things that I saw that I could have easily said, nah, I'm not doing that. When the girls died with the, the whole AKA drowning, I could have said, even though the chapter was suspended, even though... They shouldn't have been listening. They, they should have did their proper homework. That's still tied to the organization and the fact that they're okay with blindfolding someone, taking them out into like the beach or the water. I don't know if they was tied together, but they, you know, tumbled and they ended up drowning. And it was a big lawsuit. It's lawsuits all the time. People, chapters get snatched all the time. People get suspended all the time or they might just wait for everyone to graduate. But people still want to join because, like, for me, some people might look at Martin Luther King, Coretta Scott King. Like, they might look at all these higher figures. But for me, I didn't even have to look at Martin Luther King because they was already in my family. So I already knew about Greek. I knew I wanted to be Greek. I didn't have to look at a celebrity or someone that maybe made a difference in this world to be like, oh, I want to be like them. I just looked at my parents. I just looked at my family. And but I knew they were a part of something, and I thought that was something great, and I wanted to be a part of that. And I, I, I mean, I, I was very proud to be a part of organization, and everybody didn't get it. But I remember uh, this Zeta, she was from the spring of two semester. She got in, you know, we went in, oh, you know, for the summer. She came back to school, and she denounced. And I guess it was like for spiritual, like spiritual reasons. And hopefully she didn't get a lot of backlash, but you know, that was kind of new. I mean, this was before we had all the websites and all that, but I mean, people been getting out, but they just probably didn't have that voice. They didn't have people to talk to, people didn't understand. And it was just so great. So it was kind of like, why would you want to get out? 
-hmm. And even if you say it's something spiritual, if you do claim to be a Christian and you say, I'm a Christian and someone else tells you, I'm a Christian too, I'm getting out of this thing. You should want to know why. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be like, oh, they must have just had a bad experience or something wrong with them or they're crazy. Anytime, if you are not Christian and you tell somebody God said this, they probably think you a schizophrenic. Like you just hearing voices because their whole thing about faith is like an illusion or a delusion to them. If they can't touch it, they can't see it, they can't hear it, it don't exist. And they'll just look at you like you crazy. So I, I know, Erica, you've talked to people. I've talked to people. And they don't see it. But let me say something. Spiritual blindness is real. Mm-hmm. And if you are not there, God is not going to force himself in your life. But things will happen to you. You might not understand why. But once you let him in, and I really feel like this. Once you really get out of something, that's when you see those hard lessons or things that like, like the the, the signs, like you go back and you remember, yeah, I remember when that happened. And it's like, you get these epiphanies and you understand what was really going on. But when you was in it, you was by yourself. And half the time, if you were struggling in school or you were just having problems, who are you going to talk to? Because you don't want to feel weak. Everyone's looking at you. Like, I mean, when you are a Greek, if you are not a celebrity, you are a mini celebrity. And people will literally treat you like a guy. Like, literally. Like, they come and bow down to you. They kissing up to you and all that. And I've always told people, even interest, I said, just be yourself. And I know sometimes they don't always know when to approach you because they don't know where you stay. They don't know your schedule. And sometimes they might approach you and they might maybe do it in a inappropriate way, just like how someone's a fan of a celebrity and they just can't get, you know, they just they, they just stop you. But it's like you just gotta let them know. Look, I, I get it. I was where you were. I'm human just like you. But how would you want me to talk to you? Yeah, because this I, I get this comment a lot in the comment section. They say, why in the world would anybody go through a hazing experience? But when you see how Greeks are treated on campus as opposed to people who aren't Greeks, I mean, there is a difference. There's a lot of perks that come along with being a part of a Greek fraternity or sorority. And I don't think people understand how big of a deal that is to 19 and 20 year old kids who really just want to be accepted, especially when you're on a campus with a whole bunch of people. Like community is important. So I did want to find out, so were either of y'all hazed? And if so, what was the hazing experience like? Yeah, you no, want to go first, Erica? Or you want me to go? So y'all, <laughs> okay, Erica was not hazed. Were you hazed, Katrina? I wasn't hazed by people that brought me in. I didn't really get any, like, problems from other Greeks. I, I was that AKA that because everyone got them from their organization where they just cool with everybody, didn't go anywhere. I didn't have any problems with no one. But the problem I had was within my line. So it was 25 of us. And we actually went over during um, the spring break. And after we went over, it was a regional conference. That's like, if, if you know about the, we call ours a boule. But if you know about it, it's a really big thing. The regional conference is more just like a few chapters within the state. And it's still big, but it's not as big. So it actually took place in Philly, where I'm from. And so right after, you know, we became an AKA, we went there. And right after that, we was going back to campus. And I could tell, because Cheney pledges hard. Like they just, I mean, whether you pledge or you don't pledge, but that's just, they're known to pledge hard. And the way they do it, whether it's hell week or however it's done, other organizations will see you. So they know whether you pledge or not. And so the main concern for some was like, I don't want to be disrespected. You know, and even though I didn't go through nothing, I, I, you know, I went national, you know, I wasn't 
hurt or nothing by nobody. I don't want to necessarily lie and say I did, but I just don't want that disrespect. So what everyone normally does, they might call it a probate. They might call it a coming out show. And so they wanted to have one. But the regional director we had at the time, she didn't play that. She was like, all that stuff is, she was almost kind of saying it's demonic. She was saying it's all going to end up. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to be pre-pledged. It's, it's going to, it's not just going to be a show. It's always going to lead to some other nonsense. So she usually never approved that stuff. And so, but it, but but if I really tell you the real story, so after the the AKAs, the the lines were shut down my sophomore year. So you know we couldn't do nothing. The next time I went out for it, or um, excuse me, the first time I went out for it was fall three semester. And at that time, the grad advisor she was Muslim, and her mother was Muslim, and I knew all of them because, like I said, when I did that Miss Counter Girl pageant, I did that my senior year. I don't know if you want to put the photo up, but I did that my senior year in high school, and I got familiar with the grad chapter, which was the grad chapter that that brought us in. And yeah, the one, the one in the middle right there. I did that, and um, it was a, you know a good experience, and I got to know a lot of AKAs. And so when I had my rush, believe it or not, my mom was actually at my rush. And when we went to go, she kind of said, "Look, you know, I know everyone know you. They don't got no problem with you, but I don't want no jealousy or anything like that within your line. So." When we go in here, we're just going to kind of, I'm going to let you go in first and I'm going to come in after you. So even though my mom didn't uh, go to Cheney because she was in the, the, the grad chair that I was affiliated and they knew, you know, they allowed her to come. So we essentially went in there. We acted like we didn't know each other, but, but people were coming up to me. I was sitting there waiting to be called in because the way, I don't know how every other, other organization does it, but the way they do it is they put up a flyer. You have to have all this information filled out. You have to first come get it. And you have to have all this information filled out and you have to have that together. Like you have to prove that you got the GPA, all that type of stuff before you even go into the rush. These other organizations, they might just let you come in, tell you whatever. And then they go through the information at the end. Then they decide. If you don't, it's almost like they're not even trying to waste your time or have you waste their time. So so anyway, while I was sitting waiting to be called, because we was all kind of like in this big uh, room or whatever, everyone's kind of making a small chat and everyone's kind of like hoping, you know, everyone got that feeling like, I want this, I hope everything work out. And I was legacy. So what legacy means, and that wasn't always the case, like in the 70s, legacy wasn't officially like on the books. But legacy basically means as long as you meet all the requirements, you don't have to be voted on and you're in. But your mother or maybe your grandmother, they have to be active. So it's not just like a free-for-all just because your mom's an AKA. That doesn't mean you get in either. They have to be active, I think, two consecutive years prior. And you have to have the, you know, all the requirements. And but anyway, everyone that was at the the rush. A lot of them did counter girl with me. Like they was part of that, the committee, whatever. So they knew me on a first name basis. They was like, hey, Katrina. And everybody's kind of like, how they know you? And they're probably, you know, thinking like, did they just like look at your application? And I could kind of like, I, you know, I said hi. I wasn't ashamed of nothing, but they were all proud. They all said hi to me. But anyway, fast forward. So we get in the rush and they go through everything telling us a little bit about the organization and what to expect. And they told us straight up, if you are the type that you want to pledge, you want to do this, we ain't doing that. And we won't be mad at you if you get up and walk out right now, but we ain't doing that. And so, but after they rushed, they told us we should probably find out within two weeks, we should get a call whether we got in or not or whatever. We never got a call like nothing. So imagine you go to the rush you, you, and you don't hear nothing. And this, it, so people were walking around, they went to the entrance meeting. Did you hear something? And I'm like, and I'm like, no, I ain't hear nothing. And we didn't know what happened. But the next semester, apparently what happened was one of the girls who attended the rush, she 
I think previously went out for it on a, a previous line and it was some funny business. And the grad advisor at the time must have approached her. Look, I don't want no funny because I don't know if she went to her house or it was she came to hers. But I guess she thought she wasn't going to get picked and she made a complaint. And because she made a complaint, everything got shut down. But we ain't know nothing. And so the next semester is when I, you know, and like everything had happened. It was almost like the rush never happened. We had to start all over again and go through the whole process again. So it was like having a rush happen again, going through the same process again. And then, so it's kind of ironic. The rush was in February of 2004. I renounced publicly uh, a 2002, excuse me, 2022 in February. I'm making this video. It's February. It's like all of this is all at the same time. It's all coincidental. But um, so once we did get picked and, you know, we went through everything. I, I told you about the regional. So once we came back to campus, I told you the grad advisor did not, uh, like she, she, uh, our grad advisor said we can practice for the show like we're going to have it, but we don't know if we're going to have it. If we can't, then you're just going to have to wear your colors. And so uh, the grad advisor ended up saying we can't have a show, but we can come out doing a service project. So we decided we we're going to put up little signs in the hall. And I think we were going to clean or decorate the bathrooms. And that was how we were going to come out. But once the group, cause we had already practiced, like we were going to have a show, but we, you know, we couldn't do it. So they were just so upset. So they just said, listen, wear your colors tomorrow. And I, I I had got a lot of stuff because, like I said, I was legacy. I got gifts just because I was legacy. My mom, she been preparing from boules and stuff she gone because, like, it was some stuff that I had that people were like, oh, where you get that from? I'm like, I don't know. My mom got it for me. And she told me for years and years she would just get a shirt here, get a shirt there, and she just put it to the side because she knew I was going to join. And she, you know, so I just had all, it was like Christmas. AKA Christmas, if that makes any sense. The whole living room, AKA everything. But anyway, so they told us to wear our colors. So I wore my colors the next day. And at the, like towards the end of the day, I realized, cause it was a big line. Some actually commuted. They were like non-traditional students and we were all over the place. I found out I was the only one that wore anything. And I remember people like they were like excited when they saw me, but I think one person walked up to me and said, "Ooh, you gonna get in trouble?" Cause you know if you wear letters and you ain't in, in the organization, that's like a no no. And I'm like, I'm an AKA, so the next question they're gonna say, "Well, when'd you go over?" Because the way people see it is you go over when you cross the burning sands and and all that stuff, but we didn't do that. And so, um, but they still eventually ended up having a show because the grad advisor we had at the time, she kind of just didn't want to deal with the drama. She, you know, she knew they wanted it and they had it, but I didn't participate in it because I wasn't getting in no trouble. Some people just do stuff. But like I said, I knew I had the love of my, my mom, my dad, my family. And I wasn't trying to, even though people do it all the time, I wasn't trying to get our chapter suspended. I wasn't trying to do anything. So I wasn't in it. And there was another one of my former line sisters that wasn't in it. I don't know really what her, maybe she was sick. I don't know, but she wasn't in it either. But everyone else went out. But, you know, but before that, which was kind of ridiculous, we had already had to do that service project. So at that point, we, you know, I had on an AKA pen. We were going and putting up AKA stuff. And, couple of my last sisters pulled me to the side, like, can you, can you take that pen off? Like, we kind of feel uncomfortable. I'm like, who do you know puts up sorority stuff and they not in the sorority that they're putting up? And they were like, yeah, that does sound kind of dumb. And they just walked away from me. They were scared. They were scared to wear their letters. And it's like, what do you do if the rules change? You just be like tied in bondage to however things started, you know? 
And the whole thing about taking wood and all that nonsense, I don't know who started that, but my mom pledged. And she ain't go through none of that crap. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing my mom I'm, do, off, but I'm seeing some comments coming through. Uh -huh. I want to try to see if we can move on. Okay. Um, this is not a hate message. Right. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 tells us, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Not if you go, I mean, I'm not saying there may not be some tapes out there that are like really condemning and things like this, but not once have any go through the tapes yourself. Have we said we hate the people in these groups that we hate even the organization? What we're saying, and you can take this and leave it because, again, what we're speaking is to the truth to those who are willing to listen, and it's not a message of hate, it's a hate. It is a message of truth. And so to me, again, the Bible tells us in several places about, yes, those, again, who are in darkness, they do not want their deeds exposed. And of course, again, if this message offends you, again, we are, again, we can't apologize for the truth. And so don't believe what we're saying. Go see, search it out for yourself. Again, we're, we're bringing this up about why we came out and the reason it's not a personal one again in aka at at the end of every move after every meeting it tells us to pledge our heart our mind our soul and our strength not to the lord but not to god but to the organization and so this is a discourse of exposing what is inside that people on the outside are not aware of you be the judge. You look it up and compare. Is this of God? And it's true. Somebody, I went through the messages. I'm, I, I agree. I haven't seen any videos of Caucasian white organizations of people doing things like we're doing against the Divine Nine. And I don't know why. But we're, again, we are, we were a part of these organizations. And I was in there for 27 years. And I woke up because I saw the truth and I can't unsee it anymore. And so, Miss Tutu, can you go to your list? Because I know you have some more questions that and things you want to talk about. Yeah, actually, I wanted to find out from you what was your personal experience? Did you pledge grad or undergrad? And if so, like what was the process like for you? Yeah, again, I came in undergrad because I was a founding member of one of the interest groups that mm -hmm. turned into an interest group that turned into a chapter for that thing. When I got out of college, I joined a grad chapter. And so in my experience, as you had mentioned saying some of the good things about being in a Greek membership that is enticing to young minds. It is true. The social piece, you know, you get called and people notice you. And yes, they, you know, they do training programs and they do these things and you can do community service. It's not saying that though those things are evil what we are talking to is again what you are called to do for these organizations is beyond pledging you know i when i get called to do my job i'm not saying to my job i give you my heart my soul and my strength mm -hmm. we're speaking to the spirit behind the fa the foundation and so my own experience again I experienced again the elitism that is at the core of these organizations, the pride that I had when I would put in where my colors and, and this concept that again I am better than you, that again I'm smarter than you, and of course I'm I'm, I'm swinging my hair and I'm prettier than you, and I didn't have my real hair then. I had my little weave on. This is mine now. This is but in me. <laughs> so, but again, I mean, again, I bought into that whole ideal that being an AKA made me special aside from different people. And it was not until I truly decided to really become saved. Again, I got baptized in February, 2009 into Christ. Hallelujah. And I made the claim and, and a lot of people do, I'm going to get right with God. And he started to show me some things I needed to let go of. But one thing I was still holding on to was AKA because I was blinded. AKA is founded on Christian principles. And, but again, I could not refuse what I was seeing in the meetings. 
in the meetings, all I saw was hate. I saw, you know, pride. I saw rage. We actually got kicked out of a church because physical. Oh. Oh. And really? so, yes, this is what I'm seeing. And so to me, it's like my, my experience was like it was it's not like it is proclaimed. OK, many people you can go if they're willing to talk with you of so much pain and suffering and the true sisterliness is not there. It is cultish and you have clicks. And again, this process that they try to promote on the pictures. Oh, we're having so much fun and stuff. Not, not everybody's experience. And so to me, I, the guy who said, don't, you know, just leave quietly to that point. Did I enter into the sorority quietly? Did I sneak in to be an AKA? No, I proudly proclaim to the high heavens, I'm an AKA now. Oh, but we're not to proclaim, we're coming out at the same way. And because the reason I'm coming out is because again, of my faith, I'm coming out and I'm making a proclamation because I had once proclaimed this AKA is great. Now I'm proclaiming it's not, but that's not hate. And so, I, again, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I believe what the Bible says. Those in darkness hate it when their deeds are exposed. Yeah, I think um, for me, one of the reasons why I'm passionate about this is because they claim these Christian principles. So it's like when you, you, you say, well, we're Christian organizations, but my memories from being on campus, like I don't remember not one BGLO Bible study you know, the stuff I'm seeing at the step shows and all that is very sexually explicit. Some of these things and there's, there's a whole bunch of cussing, you know, and even the things that some of these guys at their fraternity probates, the things that they would do and say in front of their parents and in front of their I'm like, your mom is right there and you're doing all this nasty stuff. But then you're saying it's a Christian organization. I do believe that there are some Christians who probably were in them, but Christianity was not at all like portrayed in Greek life from my experience. No. I mean, because because I can look at the rituals clear as day. I'm like, that's not of God. And like I said, I only went through the rituals once, even though we had other lines after ours. I wasn't like participating in that part. And that's another thing. Everyone can't participate in that part. Everyone does get rituals, but usually they don't read it. And if you don't know the Bible and you just, it, it just sounds like a poem. It just sounds like something that yeah. you just made up and you could just, you don't see it. But like my, my story, as far as how I got out, um, my husband, um, he basically had a conversation. Like we, we went to high school together and we reconnected 13 years later. And when we started talking, we were talking about our faith. And he said, what are you? And I said, I'm Catholic. And we kind of had a conversation. He said, you know, you don't got the same Bible as me, right? I'm like, what? <laughs> and, you know, my whole thing, you know, it, it was just, it was a, a, a hard truth that I had to swallow. I mean, my mom really didn't believe in a lot of the stuff dealing with the Christian faith. I mean, I'm, excuse me, Catholic faith. And I kind of took kind of, I kind of just got on the bandwagon. And I didn't really think it was that serious. And he said, you don't, you don't have something you believe in and you believe in this, but you don't believe in that. It's like either it's all true or none of it's true. It's, it's no, you pick and choose. So long story short, me and him, um, you know, I started like getting in the word and everything and me and him got uh, baptized at this uh, Baptist church or whatever. And, you know, once I got in the word, I'm telling you, I just didn't want to be a part of it no more. It was just like the blinders. I didn't really know too much about the idolatry and the the, the guys and I, all that stuff until later, but I just didn't have that desire. And that actually happens. It's like the more you become like, it, it's like a new creation. This Like you died. All that stuff you used to want to do, you just don't want to do it. And sometimes you don't always have the explanation but my mom, like I said, my mom was um, very heavily active. She was an Ivy Leaf reporter. If you don't know what an Ivy Leaf reporter is, paparazzi, you got to be everywhere. So you essentially got to be at every event. And, you know, we have a national magazine. She writes stuff for that. I mean, she just does everything. 
Is my she dad, still an AKA? He, huh? Is your mom still an AKA? Well, she she passed away. Okay. In uh, March seventh, two thousand twenty-one, but she was, you know, a life member. She was set. As you would say, she was a silver star. My dad, like I said, he was very uh, active. And he's still a member. He didn't get out or nothing. My brother is still a member. A lot of these, to my knowledge, no one in my family has gotten out. They might have maybe not been active, and they might not be active because they maybe just don't, you know, they might not be against the organization. They just don't, they didn't pay their dues. But for me, like I said, I didn't go to no activities, and my my – my parents were very heavily active and charged on committees. So I was always around. So for me not to be around, something's up. So I told him I'm not coming to nothing. I don't have no desire to come to nothing. But it was in 2017, I was listening to a Bible study from Adrian Rogers, and it was talking about idolatry. And it talked about like everything you could, whatever, idolize. And I just was like, I'm done. I was just like, Cause you you can be like not have the desire, you kind of pull back, and you don't want to go, but you might not always know why, but you just know you don't have that desire. It's almost like if you have a craving for a food and you just don't want it no more, but then you find out later why you don't want it no more. But can, can y'all speak to maybe some of the rituals that kind of were red flags? Maybe I don't know if you thought about it while you were going through the process or in hindsight. Like, is there anything that you can think of? Yeah, absolutely. The whole process, you have they they're color. You have to wear specific colors on specific days during the process. And then when you're entering to the room, it is dark, blacked out, and they have a little candle in the on the table that says this is representative of the founder. And then they have the little pillows that you have to get on your knees, and do all these vows and talk about the eternal spirit and and into the to the um ancestor and to the spirit of and, and then all these all these pledges that you're saying to thee oh alpha kappa alpha and to thee the illustrious and again all of the terminology this is a spiritual foundation and you're saying all of these hymns and these statements and replies because the bat the the president of the chapter is saying now after me say this and i and you're pledged and is saying all these statements of Fidelity to the to the organization, recognizing that before this, now you see light. You are now enlightened because you now are this, you know, for sorority member. All of these different things, the kneeling on pillows in a dark room to a cattle. And then as you know, my fellow line sisters, we had to lock, we had to lock up. And if you go go, you can go Google a witch's coven meeting. You can't see a difference. Wow. I remember we had like Ivy stuff we had to put and wear on our head. And one thing I distinctly remember, because because I remember the whole process. I don't really remember what I said, but I do remember kneeling on a pillow because we had to go through different stuff, changing white, black, whatever. And I had to kneel on the pillow and we had to sign stuff. And you know how sometimes you just sign in so much stuff you might maybe write on the wrong line. And I noticed I had wrote on the wrong line and one of the AKAs had like walked over and I asked her, did I, did I have to do this over? Did I make a mistake? And she said, just sign it. And I was like, okay. That's scary. Well, uh, that that would have been the part of time for me to get out of there. But I just, I didn't know if, I wasn't laughing. I wasn't giggling. It was just like you, you make a mistake, and she just I'm I I remember that to this day. So at chapter meetings, like I'm assuming there's prayers and stuff, but other than that, like is is Christ anywhere at the chapter meeting? No, but why would it be prayers anyway? Absolutely. Are we a, are we a religion? The <laughs> chapter of my chapter before I renounce, and somebody had mentioned the fact that yes, they will meet at church churches. It'll be a church service that's dedicated to that organization that day. And so, but yeah, it's like this. They say prayers. And even in the ritual book, they have one of the little words is there, and to Jesus. But then they say, and to the other eternal whoever. Eternal spirit so, or whatever. Jesus, yeah. and along with Buddha and Confucius and whoever else that 
because again everybody that comes in there is not a believer so whatever god floats your boat you're good to go don't worry about it like she said sign your name that you will promise to keep secret everything that you've said and done today keep secret what is the bible telling about keeping secrets it doesn't say nothing about keeping secrets it's talking about them being shouted to the rooftop being a light yeah exactly yeah. i mean you don't really think about it but you're like really like blood sisters when you think about the bible and people shed blood and i mean i didn't do that but that's how it felt mm -hmm. you know because and, and I was listening to other like denouncement videos of just people talking about getting out and how the stuff is like demonic and out of God. And they said you're unequally, whether you Christian or not, you are unequally yoked with all these different people. And y'all do these oaths and regardless if you don't like their lifestyle, they could be homosexual, whatever, whatever the case is, you're not going to openly disrespect them because you got this, this bond, even if they do something you don't really like. So it's like it's like a cult, you or or a cult. You don't always agree, but you look the other way. I mean, yeah. you, like you don't say nothing. It becomes dangerous, I think, especially for Christians who are in it, because you're kind of like look, turning a blind eye to all your LBs and LSs doing all these things that are not not Christian at all. But because they're in an organization that claims to be based on Christian principles, they think, well, then I must be OK then, which I think is another reason why it's important for people to denounce, not because denouncing saves you, but because people really think, well, I must be Christian because I'm in a Christian organization. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, that's, that's, that's called it, speaking in therapies, rationalization and, t and t intellectualizing, meaning you're rationalizing away the evil you see. Yeah. Oh, don't look at the evil. We're a Christian organization based on what, but what, based on what facts <laughs> Jesus says, you'll know who belongs to me by what your hate, your pride, your selfishness. Oh, your bins, your mansion. Oh, your, your six figure salary. No, by your love and the fruits of darkness, fruits of light. You tell me again, the Bible makes it clear. You cannot get good fruit out of a wicked tree. But they flip it around and say, look at our good service, look at our community mm -hmm. service, ignore the, 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 the hazing and the deaths and the sexually traumatic transmitted diseases. Oh, and, and getting the shame and the pride and all of this. Oh, don't that don't worry about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at what we're doing. And to me, this is where people get deceived, thinking that because they say we're, we're, and it's, we're Christian. But what is the fruit? What is the fruit? What is the fruit of the individual members and then collectively as the group? Because they, again, you cannot become one of these just because I want to sign up for it. You have to be accepted by them. You have to look a certain way, make a certain amount of money and be a certain way in order to be accepted. Because if you don't meet these criteria, you will not be accepted. I'm, I'm, where's my Bible? You cannot become a believer until you look a certain way, make a certain amount of money. No. All come all who, again, come all. But these organizations says, no, we are an elite, illustrious, and we're, we want the best of the crop of humanity. All on the cusp of this is a Christian organization that is exclusive, is exclusive as in, in this judgmental. It's judgmental, meaning, oh, you don't, oh, look, she ain't getting in here. She's too fat. Mm. Oh, no, and no. They actually, yeah, yeah, they had that paper bag. Paper bag. Thing. Yeah. That's, oh, that's real. The paper bag test is actually, wow. It's yeah. still done. I mean, there's, I'm not saying it's, it's still done. <laughs> it's still done. Some people. Depends on what, go look from the United States, yeah. you know, whole United States. There are some chapters. You can't find anything lighter than, I mean, darker than a paper bag. There's some people who still, they still hold to these prejudicial ideals mm -hmm. that, okay, again, a tip, because again, I often, when I first, you know, became an AKA, I would all, when I would say, oh, I'm an AKA, they were like, oh, you're really, you're an AKA? You're not a typical AKA, basically, because I'm dark skinned. Mm -hmm. So this this prejudice is still alive and it's still ongoing. Light skin, dark skin, straight hair, kinky hair. 
all of these things again are still promoted even though they only they'll say it, that's not how they are but it's in in reality it is exactly like that exactly like that and yeah I so they didn't oh, oh i'm sorry ahead. i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead go ahead uh-huh. um so like the movie school days um you know it was they might not have openly said it but it was like aka's and deltas mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know yeah. And um, but but like I said, it wasn't until later down the line because I, I I heard the story that Deltas were reject AKAs, but it wasn't until down the line I realized they were not like they wanted to be AKAs, and then they didn't let them in, and then they had to do something else. They actually were yeah. AKAs, and then they got kicked out. But um, the one thing I never understood about the whole hazing process, we was going through so much as African-Americans in itself. Why would you want to be doing that to each other? It was like kind of putting yourself through slavery. Oh, we didn't go true. through slavery. Our, our ancestors did. Why would you want to do that to somebody? And any other, for the most part, any other job or anything you have to do, you would never let no one talk to you like that. You would never let no one touch you. And I mean, it just makes no sense. And it's, it's very degrading, but you essentially become brainwashed. So that whole thing about the Christian principles, we're a non-hazing organization and it's just like crickets, like nobody, everybody know, but nobody don't say nothing. But it's just like, it's almost like you kind of go at your own risk. No one's putting a gun in your head and making you do any of this. But a lot of times people join, they don't want to, they don't want to quit. Yeah. I mean, especially if you paid your money, like I can imagine Signing up for something, some people don't even know that the hazing is going to happen. So if you yeah. pay five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, some people are <laughs> two and three thousand uh, dollars. Keep going, keep going. Really? <laughs> I was, I was, I mean, I was an AK for many years, and I had never done brought people in. Mm-hmm. But but again, the last chapter I was in, I was part of their MIP process. When I looked at what those young ladies were willing to pay, you're talking about double digits. Oh, I'm like, I, I don't know if I, I would not have paid. It's crazy. <laughs> Taking out loans. It's See, crazy. Ridiculous. Stuff to pay these enormous amounts of fees and mm-hmm. dues and everything. The cost is $500. But That's you know what? for one of the conferences that is not at all a ticket, a ticket to a conference will cost you five hundred dollars absolutely yes. and a lot of times you're paying for other aka's that have arrived yes. if you're if, if you're a supreme bass that's like our national president you have arrived you're set for life probably if you're a regional director or any of that stuff because i you know i went to two regional conference i didn't get a chance to go to the bullet because right after i graduated um i got hurt and so I, I I didn't I didn't go to any boules, but I remember when I did go to regionals, and my mom was like, "You see all them people sitting up there? Some of them are AKAs, some of them is their family. Like you're you're paying. It's like the red carpet. The red carpet is out, and you're paying for because you know my my mom would go to a lot of Sigma stuff, and she's like, that stuff don't cost that much money for them, and they even give us a nice package deal for the wives." They ain't got nothing for the husbands. Well, the husbands they usually call if, if you're AK and you are married, they call them like a honeydew, or and then if you got a child, they call them a honey don't. They got all these different, yes, they got all these different things. But one thing I wanted to say, my mom, she was on a history committee. She was on like at least 12 committees, besides even her being a I believe reporter in the grad chapter. But when she what she learned was when she was putting the history books together, she said, wait a minute, from like it was almost like a year, like 20 years, I think, where it was no lines in the grad chapter. And she said, what's up with that? They had this rule back in the day. If you went to a school that had an AKA chapter on that campus and you chose not to do it, whether they got suspended or you just didn't get to do it, you didn't get picked, you couldn't go to a grad chapter. Like you couldn't join through grad chapter. So that was it. But then they changed it later down the line and people started joining grad chapter, but sometimes people join grad chapter because they couldn't do it undergrad, not because they didn't get picked. They were suspended or they, you know, they couldn't even do it. They didn't even have a chance to. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah, I see midnight 
midnight man again this breaking you down to build you back up is the same as masons because when i say how deep you want to go how be deep you want to go into it all secret societies their foundation is freemasonry mm -hmm. okay again all of them where do you think think about it think logic and rationality i'm a young black female at a college and i want to start a social group who came up with the let's do candles and seances type stuff where would we why would we even i mean i've joined community groups and we haven't let's get in the dark closet and say these things where did they get the idea go you can go and google the rituals for many greek white and black organizations and they all have rituals that look like witch coven rituals pillows and kneeling and humming and to the gods of the earth and to the gods of here and to the pledging your and all of them why can't we just get together we have we're the same I, we have ideas we're just going to go out and serve the community where do they get this idea for all these rituals that are secret and and and, and do and pledging your blood and tears and sweats and and your life to the organization i like you said i joined girl scouts i don't remember some secret girl scout meet i'm a soup i'm a <laughs> and but they but all of all of all of all of them people where did they get the idea for these kind of rituals we just got a group of girls or or men we, we're together and we want to we want to help the community i have an idea let's go and create some secret you know humming and 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 sayings and and you got to do this and and walk through the burning sands and you got to get where did they get this from freemasonry mm -hmm. again you, there's books and things again on freemasonry and you read they have the degrees different degrees of what they have to say and do and is straight up crazy but doesn't understand all secret societies their foundation is they got these ideas from freemasonry and what's under freemasonry the worship of the architect this the the lucifer the grand and you, again we're not talking about make freemasonry but again oh where did these groups why do they have why do i have to do all this to join this organization why do i have to pledge my name and my heart and my soul to this organization to join it why why this i'm trying logic why 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 do i have to do all this what what is the kneeling and i'm saying the ritual to get in is not the last time you do this every year every year at the rededication you're back into a dark room kneeling and vowing and promoting again the same system of the sisterhood god and it's not again where do they get this idea from i mean people here if you, you you're doing a church church does your church i know our churches have you know the yearly pastor br breakfast or the whatever the wives this are you guys meeting in a secret location and pledging jesus christ lord jesus we're going to do this and you're kneeling oh you got a little cross in there and y'all are are you doing that if you are i'll be like y'all wrong too but i'm just saying do you do this for your traditional celebrations for your church do you I've wondered about that because that's another thing that makes that gives me pause as a Christian because I know some of them say, well, I'm just not active anymore. I don't do that. But but once you get in, so you are having to repeat similar rituals even long after. I wanted to ask y'all this, too. And if you don't know, that's totally fine. Do honorary members have to go through any type of ritual process? Do you know? But technically, yes, because, again, once you become honorary you get into the system of every year we're doing the rededication and all this other stuff so yes yes yeah so the only oh i'm sorry the only difference i know is that when you're honorary it's like because you get in that way you might not be able to vote on a whole bunch of stuff it's almost like it's so you know like when they get the honorary degrees it's like but you still can't it's kind of like that so they still be, go through the national, so they still go through the rituals. 
mm-hmm. but because of their like their high status, it's almost like the name. We just want the name. You don't really got to do nothing. You just got to look real nice. Just represent yeah, us. I was asking because I saw the Erica Campbell from Mary Mary recently. Yeah, they they oh, and Karen LaBelle, mm-hmm. some other people, you know, and they do that all the time. But again, they don't have it in fine print what you signing up for. Like you don't think you joined a secret society. Like my mom, she told me a lot of stuff she went through when she pledged, but she never told me about the secret secret stuff. She didn't tell me about the rituals. She didn't tell. I mean, she told me about she was being yelled at. The the craziest thing that happened to her that she told me and she was like about to drop line after that was they had her in a position like like almost like you're sitting like a chair, but it's just your body against the wall. And you know, you know, she wasn't feeling that good if you can kind of figure out what I'm saying. And she started crying and they got scared. And it was like, stop. So sometimes people can get hurt and they stop or whatever, but yeah, it's that's yeah, crazy. And Crystal Pharrell, yes, I didn't talk about that. When a when a AKA dies, they do a special ritual. Again, Ivy Ivy beyond the wall again, ceremony. Ivy beyond the wall, and and again, to me, this concept. Where do they get this idea from? Because where in the Bible does it tell us to honor the dead, memorize the dead? No, it's like let the dead bear the dead and y'all go on and live your life and, and you know be Christians. It's like we are not to be dead, you know, the death and de- and and focused and doing our stuff, but the witches do. Mm-hmm. That's what the witches do. Yeah, and, I remember uh yeah. the first time I saw Ivy Beyond the Wall ceremony, I wasn't even a, a aka yet, but um my neighbor that lived like when I was growing up, my neighbor that lived next door to me, she was an aka, she was part of the reason why I ended up doing the counter girl thing. And um, she had three daughters that were AKAs. One actually, her youngest one got into the grad chapter that I, I was a part of. And when I got into the grad chapter, I was only in it for like a, like a year. But um, but anyway, as far as um, the whole Ivy Beyond the Wall thing, I saw it, and I didn't. I just thought it was like a memorial, so I, you know, because people do. You know, like when you go in the army, they put the the thing on. So I didn't really think nothing of it. Um, but as I know now, like I remember my dad, uh, was like, oh, so-and-so died. He's in Omega, Omega, uh, I mean, Omega chapter. I'm like, there's no such thing. Yeah, I noticed. So I read the, the Kappa ritual. They talk about the, I read them all. Before. I had to go through them all before I went through mine. Cause I'm like, it's just so dark. I got to prepare myself. Yeah. Kappa rituals talk about golden shores. The Omegas talk about. I know there's something about the Shekinah light, but that doesn't have the Shekinah glory or something. That don't have nothing to do with death, but that was still weird. And then I read a book. I don't know if y'all read the book African American Fraternities and Sororities, which was like mm-hmm. a whole bunch and of then and then and then I also had a divine nine I had. So we yeah. had the books get all yeah. yeah yeah. But it talks about like deltas. Deltas are gonna well. There was a chant that they would do. I'm gonna show Saint Peter my delta pin. When I get in, it's just like, why would you even say something like that? If this is just supposed to be, this is just a social group. It's a social club. So what? Exactly. I don't know. There's a lot of why am I pledging my heart, my soul, shit every month, every month, wow. every month, every month. And somebody said about the um, like honor societies and other things like this. To me, look at the heart of the matter. I remember in high school, I got in, inducted into the honor society and it was like, you know, in a dark theater, but I do not recall whatsoever. <laughs> I, Erica, now that I'm in the national honor society, I'm special and I've saw the light and all this other stuff. <laughs> People look at the heart. Mm-hmm. Same thing. I had a cousin who's like a Kappa. Well, what about you make a pledge to the United States? Let me go look at the pledge of the United States. I pledge to the United States, my heart, my mind. <laughs> Will you make a pledge to your job? Oh, yeah. So I walk around with my employer jacket everywhere. You know I work for this company. No. I pledge to say I'm going to do what you hire me for. Right. Big difference. Big, right. di- big difference. Big difference. Look, people, kind of context. Yeah. This is going to tell you to pledge to be a good member of the sorority. 
it says pledge to the organiz pledge to this organization your life mm -hmm. my job the, the national honor society does not ask me to do this and there's a big difference mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not these, this will follow you to the final judgment type of language in a job um, contract or anything like that's totally different. Even the pledge is more so like, I just promise that I'm not going to commit treason. I'm not going to do anything that would, you know, hurt the our country, right? So that's different than saying, this is going to follow me to final judgment. And if I, if I don't keep these secrets and I have to be sisters. It doesn't matter what religion this person is. They're still my sisters. Like, but you, you can't be my sister in that sense. If I'm a Christian and you're a Muslim or a Buddhist or something like that, mm -hmm. that's totally wrong. Um, but I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wind it on down. There were a few questions that came in. So we'll go through some of these again. If okay. there's something you don't know, then just say child girl. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. Long. Uh, Mr. Willie doc. I did want to say thank you for the, for the super chat thank you so much bro and if y'all haven't already please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel because we we have these conversations every now and again all right beauty says did either of these ladies take on a line and pledge anyone so did y'all bring lines yeah, that's in? Where, I, where i found out like they're paying this much like these women are crazy <laughs> like oh my um, gosh yeah so like what, how much how much did you say you saw like around I mean, about ten thousand up because yeah. this is not just fees because you have the the uh, initiation fees then you have the chapter fees and then you have to pay for the first year of regional conferences and you got to pay for the paraphernalia ten thousand plus ten thousand plus and you know yes again i i participated in because again i was the chaplain and I had the, the responsibility for the spiritual condition of the chapter, which was wicked. That's, that's what woke my eyes up. I'm like, why are all this wickedness everywhere? Man, this is evil. You are, you already have college students like spending all this money just to go to school and then to spend more money just to be associated with a group. And sometimes if you don't do what the group tells you to do, you, you're really paying for friends that aren't really your friends. It's just, it's sad. And that is, I remember the, again, when you're prospective ladies for the process. Yeah, we had their picture up. We had their dossier. And you better believe it wasn't like a kind, oh, well, let's, she's got this, this. No, it was like, uh-uh, she ugly. Get out. She, we ain't taking her in. Oh, you know, she a hoe. Well, no, I heard about her. Get her out of there. And that was and that was another thing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Judging these ladies, we're making sure. Oh, we looking at we're looking at their history and their past and everything to pick who we're gonna let into our illustrious. We're not just gonna let anybody into our organization. And so that organization, you know, as we're picking the ladies, we were gonna allow to give their life and soul to us. We were saying, not that, no, not her. Mm -mm. Yeah, happened. so um, the so people from my chapter that came in with my line, it was like once they went over, they, they kind of put on this persona. However they acted before, they totally changed. They was like totally conceited, like you approachable. And I wasn't like that. And they were trying to tell me, well, you don't need to be friends with nobody else she was with friends with before. We're your friends now. now this is people within my line, not like other AKAs that brought me in are telling me this stuff. This is just this is just their theology of how it's supposed to be. And they it was a lot of fights. It was a lot of problems because of how they were acting. They weren't welcome to go really. They didn't really get along with the other Greeks because they just had this persona. So if you like, because you can have your little friendly like rivalries, but if you really don't like somebody and then you become Greek, you don't like them like ten times more. It's like, I mean, some people don't want to hear this, but it's like Bloods and Crips, sophisticated Bloods and Crips, because when you don't agree with what they want to do, they coming for blood. Like, they're coming for blood. It's amazing to me that, okay, so one of the reasons the organization started was to allegedly combat racism, right? Like, for this to be a place for African-American students to have some kind of network where they can connect 
but then you still have all this elitism. So white people use skin color to reject people, but then the black fraternities and sororities use other superficial things to reject people. So it's still this cycle of prejudice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you have black people that are really, really light skinned that could just pass for white or they could just blend in. They still wanted to be treated as equal, but they knew whether right or wrong, their skin color could they they might miss out on some opportunities. And if someone else that looks a little darker wants to hang with them, it's almost like they might oh, hate like you because they don't want to mess up no opportunities for themselves. That makes sense. So you don't want to be too black. Cause you still want to be treated like the white people that you look up to. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> if, you, if you're really light exactly. and you don't make a lot of noise, if, if, if you're really light skinned and you don't make a lot of noise, we can tolerate we we can tolerate that Negro or whatever they want to say. But you look a little different, a little darker, got a little voice behind you. That scares them. Yeah, so absolutely. You, absolutely. They use people to me, like even seeing them choosing like uh, Erica Campbell or Yolanda Adams. I feel like because so many of so many of y'all have been denouncing publicly because you're saying I'm a Christian now. Oh well, so let's get some Christian <laughs> celebrities to yeah. join, and so then that'll make us look yeah, a little bit wrong with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is my theory, and I'm sticking to yeah. it. I All right. I do too. <laughs> I know we kind of addressed this earlier, but I did want to pull it up. Uh, Wayne says, why does it seem there's more of an outspoken renouncing of pledging black Greek organizations, but very few, if any, strong movement among white Christians in their Greek context? I want to jump on this because this is just from a study of the difference. What to me, I'm asterisk. The Church of Christ is black and white, the yellow, purple, whatever. <laughs> but unfortunately today in America, especially American, the white church versus the black church and in the black community, the church system is more valued. So to me, that's my theory, Wayne, is this because in blackness, the church is a very huge component of the black culture versus white. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. Because again, yeah, I mean, I'm saying you don't have white churches, but the concept of church and spirituality is really more big in the African American communities compared to whites. And this Greek stuff is tied into linked interlinked to that because it's a huge part of the African American community. I mean, or concept mm -hmm. of good blacks and versus bad blacks and all this other stuff. So yeah, yeah. And, and then also the white fraternities or sororities, I don't think they go past college. Like exactly. no they're, they're not like, yeah, that, that's another point. Yeah. yeah. So it's not your whole life. Like even after you graduate, if you in a BGLO, this is still like a, a huge part of your life. Just like Katrina yeah. was saying with her family, your whole family, sounds like your family knew more about Greek life than it did about Roman Catholicism, even though y'all were Roman Catholics. Yeah, I mean, well, a lot of them, you know how society say you gotta go to church all the time, you know, they was just tired. And like back then, you know, you could hit the, the, the students and my mom, like she grew up in St. Thomas Virgin Islands and they had stuff where they would put you in a trash can outside. They would um, sit your desk outside in the hot sun because the coldest it got there was 70 degrees. And so she, like she um, was born in Virginia. She grew up uh, in North Carolina till she was two. Then she moved to St. Thomas Virgin Islands. So from K to 12 uh, uh, high school, she was in uh, Catholic school and them nuns were mean. <laughs> She ain't like it. She was like, I'll, I'll, I'll give them through the religious study, but they ain't going to that school. So we went to public school. We didn't go to Catholic school. Wow. She was like, uh, -uh. All right, beauty. I know this is kind of redundant too, but did y'all haze anybody, even though y'all weren't hazed? Yeah, no. Mm -mm. No. All right. But I'll say, you know, hypothetically, yes. As I said, maybe I didn't haze a person to their face or whatever, but I was most definitely judgmental. I was very, again, con again, go read the chants. I'm conceited. I was conceited. And yes, I would look down on you and I would stub my nose at you and I would reject you based on my identity as an AKA. So, you know, vicariously, yeah. <laughs> you know, hazing people and judging people based on because of my status. But not I mean, I, I mean, 
I, I, I never really had a problem with no one, but it was this one situation. I, uh, years down the line, eventually like reached out to her on my own and apologized, but it was this girl who was going out for, um, AKA this was the, the line that went after us. And, you know, sometimes with the grad chapter, they don't know you personally. They're not on campus. They don't get a chance to know you. All they see is what you write is your information on the, on, on the paper. And somehow a video, an explicit video had got out about her and, you know, they didn't pick her mm-hmm. and her, her sister was an AKA, like, you know, she had a little Greek background and she felt some type of way. And I think she said something about she was either going to sue the sword. She was going to do something. And once I found out, I said, hold up a second. If you don't, you didn't get in or for whatever reason, you ain't, you ain't going to be doing all that and then be sitting over on the AKA plot. Are you crazy? Because usually the only people that come over to the plots are people you're friends with or whatever. But she was like busting it up and then at the same time saying bad stuff about us. And I said, I better not see you on that plot. That's as far as I went. Yeah. But I never was telling nobody that they had to do something or anything like that. And I tell you, the craziest thing that happened, once a lot of people had graduated and it was really just me and one of my other line sisters, she, I don't know if she um, post-pledge or whatever, but she wanted to pledge these girls. And she really went around and was telling the girls that they, I guess, wanted to be AKAs what they had to do. But whatever you do, don't talk to Katrina. I, one girl actually stopped being friends with me. Like she just stopped talking to me. We was friends, you know, and she was like a younger class than me, but you know, it wasn't about like, Oh, you want to be an AK? I, I never told nobody to kiss up to me or do anything, you know, even though sometimes people might kind of keep it quiet. And then when you want to join then that's when they get real, I've never told anybody they had to do anything, but they looked at me like I was basically grad chapter. They looked at me like if they want to do something bad, don't tell, don't tell her because she she'll probably tell. I will say, even though I didn't get past the rush interest meeting, because apparently I had offended somebody in that sorority, but <laughs> I was so intimidated going in that dark room and like having all these people ask you tons of questions. You don't know who's in there. You don't know that people have something against you until it's just like, well, I, what did I do? You know, it's just it was crazy. And I, I did hear stories of well, the, this person had a bad reputation. Or we didn't like that. She said this three years. It's just like, this is a lot. Like, where's the forgiveness from the Christian organization? Mm-hmm. No. no forgiveness. And then the fact that it's so community oriented. But if you saw a homeless person on the side of the street wearing an Omega Sci-Fi shirt or AKA shirt, or like, they will like, Snatch it off you, mm-hmm. or don't wear that, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Or even I, I've heard the stories of like people who are actually in the org, some who are even pledged, but still having to prove that that they were pledged to somebody who doesn't believe that they were pledged. It's like you double pledging to to prove stuff to people you don't know, because it's not good enough. You just in the organization, like I said, you at my chapter. Somebody could come to visit some other Greeks from a different school and they're like looking them up and down. Like, would you do? It's like a debate whether who went harder or whatever. It's like, what difference does it make? Yeah. You put that on your resume. I went hard. Is that supposed, what difference does it make? Now, one thing I wanted to say is it's, it's, it's funny, but it's twisted in the same time. So this was like, um, I think this might've been like my junior year. And um, it was this Kappa that uh, I guess he transferred. He he didn't go to the school. He just transferred it, but he already was a Kappa from another school. We was in the cafeteria, and I don't know why, but I always just wanted to do this to a Kappa. So you know how they, they have the canes or they either have it like that or they might even have it in their back pocket. So we was, like, in the cafeteria together, standing in line. We didn't get our, like, our, our tray yet. I was standing next to him, and I said, wouldn't it be funny if I just took his cane? So I literally went to go put my, you know, my hand to go grab his cane out of his pocket. And he grabbed my arm tight and he looked like the devil. And I'm telling you, I don't like going to clubs. I never really was 
you know, going to clubs or nothing like that. But you know, when you go to a club, you you might have to like you get carded. You gotta show your ID. I, you know, even though I was an AKA, I didn't have a AKA shirt on, but I did have a pink and green high maintenance bag, and I happened to have an AKA mirror in there. And I was like, wait, 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 I'm an AKA. Like I was like having to explain myself. And then it was a Cindy Gamera that was next to him. I was like, yeah, yeah, she she, she cool. Soon as he found out I was AKA, he just went right back down to normal and gave me the tightest hug ever and introduced wow. me. To him. But if he he was gonna kill me. Wow. I mean it's crazy. It's that serious. I mean, it really is. And so in this time and age, you know, I'm reading through the comments, and I just want to make this point to this one comment I saw in there. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with a healthy debate and discussing and going back and forth. But to me, this is what is crystal clear to me. Bring the bring. Hey, bro, come on. When we're doing a debate, you have facts. I have facts. Mm -hmm. But what I have found, I've, I've looked at certain videos that try to say dispute ours. Yeah. But they never have facts. They don't have any scripture to no dispute scripture. back what we're saying. Mm -hmm. So don't just this is y'all wrong. Tell us how. Yeah. Give us some facts to our points. Mm -hmm. We say it's not of God. There's rituals. What? What's your what's What's your what's your rebuttal? This is a, to me in a court of law, the lawyer has facts and the defense has maybe facts, <laughs> but the, the defense don't have to tell the truth. And this that principle the same here. You people who will say, yeah, well, you know, I don't agree with this. How so? Please tell me. Give me some points. Give me some facts. Give me some give me some scripture that supports this concept this process of elitism and secretive and them claiming to all be the light and to claim that all these things that they claim this give us some facts to dispute to debate back and forth don't just say it's y'all wrong and that's what i find that all these so-called so they're wrong how so please i'm willing to debate let's go at it let's get the scripture let's open it and like the bereans let's see is what this really saying what they're saying let's look at what they do but they don't do that so please don't oh we don't yeah. like this fine don't like it but how tell me why what is it that you're disagreeing with our points please bring some facts and until then it's like yes you can you can say we're wrong but they don't ever ever have facts yeah they don't they are. to debate back their disagreeal with us people love their sin and yeah, they want to stay are. in it and it's like they don't want no one bringing light to what they're doing because they don't want to change and they don't want to feel that 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 judgment or that you know that 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 guilt and like I said when I made a post that went viral after I um posted uh from um excuse me G Renee's book and it was talking about the um the false guys that we um identify with people went nuts mm -hmm. but it was people from my school that was just essentially trolling my page and I said, hey, why are you doing this? You know, I know these people. Like, if you want to talk to me, you want to talk in private or whatever, let's let's do that. And they're just like, AKA, y'all better come get her. And I'm like, I ain't no AKA. Who they going to come get? <laughs> and I'm like, and even if I was an AKA and I said something out of line, I'm Katrina. They always tell you when you become in the organization, you're not Katrina no more. You're AKA Katrina. I'm Katrina. I'm Katrina, and I'll always be that. And I always, I guess, pride myself in my mind at the time back then, I'm not going to change like the rest of them. I'm not going to be mean to people. I'm not going to, you know, because if you want people to be a part of that, why are you going to be mean to people? Why are you going to put down people? But but anyway, I, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's just the ugliness. And this might not be the best analogy, but people that come out and they try to talk to whoever they know and they, they get the backlash or they get whatever, it's almost like someone, a family member or a stranger that you trust and they molest you and then you try to go tell somebody and they just keep that to yourself. How does that feel? Mm -hmm. Keep that to yourself. My dad said, Keep that to yourself. Yeah, it's like they totally ignore the arguments against Greek life. And their response is always, well, you just, 
it's not my fault that you put God above or you put the organization above God. And it's like, that is, that has never been the argument. The argument is yeah. why are we doing these rituals exactly. that seem to be totally against what the Bible tells us as Christians, we have the liberty to do. That's the issue. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. But with that being said, I, I'm so grateful to y'all for coming on the channel and, you know, just hanging out with us today. I think this was a fruitful discussion. And who knows? I might, you know, I might invite. I'm you telling you, it's 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 so much There's more. But I would definitely recommend if if you want to do this because there's so many of us that are out. You can talk to us. You can have a big panel, like as they used to say, "pan hell." And just saying that word just gives me chills. But how, like all all the ex people that got out, you want to talk to come all of us? Join the conversation, please. Please come join the conversation. I'm join not afraid. To say, let's let's bring it. Bring it. Because, but again, that's my challenge to Ooh, you. I would love to host that debate. If there's anybody out there watching this right now, leave me a comment if you are willing to address your organization's rituals, because that's really the heart of the issue. If you are willing to talk about that, and we can have, I can moderate a debate. I won't say nothing. I'll give y'all five minutes on this side, five minutes on that side, and we can talk about it. So if anybody out there is interested in that, Erica said, I'm with the, I want the smoke. Okay. I want the smoke. <laughs> hey, I'm willing to consider different sides of things. Yeah. But don't just come on saying, I'm wrong. How so? Tell me so. How? Give me some facts. Get that. Open that word. Let's open the word of God and see what it says. That's it. That's it. Well, thank you, ladies. Again, y'all hold on for a You're second. You're welcome. After, after we um, close out, just so we can chat for a little bit. But okay. live chat, thank y'all so much for yes, everyone. Yes. Everybody. Thank you. For the most part, y'all behaved. I did just have to time somebody <laughs> out, but, okay. but come back. Just be nicer next time. But yeah, um, if y'all like this video, please hit the like button. Please leave me a comment in the comment section after the live stream is over so we can help get this video out to as many people as we can. But y'all be blessed and we'll be back the next time.